How's everybody doing? My name is Taylor Alsasser. I'll be running you through how to resample directly from a Native Instruments standalone player directly into your Reason. So if you use Reason exclusively, you can resample from Native Instruments standalone and get that audio into Reason, put it in an NXT or into an audio track and stretch it out or do whatever with it. And Pretty much, I just want you to be able to use Native Instruments, and I want to be able to use Native Instruments. So we can all use Native Instruments. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so uh, pretty much, we're going to load up our audio MIDI setup first, and that's right here, but it's also in your utilities and your applications. So I'm just going to load it from there. All right, and so now we're going to create an aggregate device, because if you didn't have this Pro Tools aggregate I.O., then you can just create one of your own. So, you just click this little plus, and it'll just create an aggregate device for you. I'm going to rename that as Reason Aggregate Device. Add in some inputs here into my Avid inbox so I can get my outputs from my inbox that are going directly into my speakers and into my headphones, and also use my Soundflower 16 channel because I'm going to be using Massive today, and um, for some reason Massive likes to only read the Soundflower 16 channel instead of the 2 channel. So, we're just going to keep on that wavelength. Alright, so, now I'm going to load up Massive. Now the sequence already loaded in. MIDI's triggering. It sounds as though, because I'm not hearing any sound, I'm already routed through the Soundflower 16 channel because this is something that I do quite often. So, switch to my Avid inbox just so I can hear it really quick. So you hear that. All right, cool. And um, yeah, so now everything's routed fine. I'm going to just go ahead and switch my output into the 16 channel. And I'm going to open up Reason now. Just going to go ahead. Pull this down. Before I do anything, I'm going to open up my preferences using Command, Comma. And I'm going to go into my audio, already on the Reason Aggregate device. So now I'm going to check my channels. And so going to unclick 1 and 2 because my input from this mic right here is going through input 1 on my Avid inbox. So I would not like to have any feedback going through this for you guys to hear. So I'm just going to turn that off, turn off 3 and 4 as well, and then just turn off the rest of these too because I'm only going to be using a stereo bus. So this is like an internal busing system. All right, so I'm going to open up my control panel, see everything that's cool. See, I got my Avid inbox right here. How I knew that inputs 1 through 4 were going to be used up by my inbox is because of this guy right here. And it says 1 through 4, or just 4. So that means that 5 through 20 are going to be occupied by my Soundflower. So... With that in mind, I'm going to go ahead, create an audio track, open this up, go ahead and switch it to a stereo input, play my amp massive, just command tab over to massive, play it with my Axiom 49 key, and just letting you know what I got, you know, this is just in case you're wondering. Oh, and look, we got signal. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, so now I'm just going to command return within reason. <laughs> within reason. Uh, yeah, just reason jokes all day here. All right, so now I'm recording. And look at that. We got some signal going into there from Massive. Looking nice and pretty. Cool. So now I got that. Let's increase whatever clip gain I think that is. Awesome. 
Awesome. So now if you're wondering, okay, well, I have a sequence that I want to use Massive for and like I already have this MIDI for me and I just want to get a new sound on top of that but I don't have the sound I need and I want Massive or FM8 or something like that. So in order to work around that because at this point in time you cannot send out MIDI from Reason to trigger, trigger external devices. So, maybe in 7, I don't know if you, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe in 7, but uh, let's go and create an NNXT, because this will be the workaround for that. I'm just going to drag that guy in there, right click, reset device. So now it's initialize, initialize the patch. And um, yeah, I didn't know that for a while. Because I use Reason 5 a lot, I was used to right-clicking and seeing initialize patch there, but they switched that all covertly to reset device, and that tripped me up for a little while. All right, so now in order to get this working, I'm going to have to go into my panel view, open up my hardware interface to my audio I.O. And so the sampling units right here, if you guys want to learn more about how to sample, check out um, Steve Hightecker's video on sampling into NNXT. It's a great video. I love it. All right. So I'm going to route directly from 5 and 6 into my sampling inputs. Now this should work because I have inputs 5 and 6 only being used but if it doesn't work I'll show you why okay so I'm gonna start my sampling now I'm just gonna trigger my device all right so we're not getting any sound so my first thought was okay since I have input 5 and 6 that must mean 5 and 6 should be the thing but what reason is done is because those are the only two inputs it then transfer those over to one and two. So try it again. And look, we have continuity. All right, I'm triggering a chord right now. I'm just going to trigger one note. All right, so. You got that going. Cool. Now I'm going to go into my edit sample. Just going to drag this start time over to here. End time right here. I'm going to normalize this sequence because it's kind of low. I mean, it can always be turned up just a little bit, and then I can see exactly where this is going to come in. So I'm going to make sure that my track is armed right here. And to separate my keyboard from Massive, so I know that I'm not triggering that, I'm just going to push FN key and then F4 because I have one of those wireless keyboards that doesn't have a number pad. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to trigger it from my keyboard. And because I didn't go in and record a sample at C1, C2, C3, it's re-aliasing and changing the length of the sample. So now it's kind of like this little glitchy thing that's going on that I kind of like, honestly. A nice little texture in the background, you know. You can put some reverb on it, I don't know. Just go up in here. I'm just going to put a couple effects on there really quick. Turn those on. All right. Okay. So, having a little fun with that. So, now you see how that signal path is flowing. I got some audio here that I sampled from Massive into here. And now we have this NNXT that I resampled 
some audio directly into. All right, so, all right, so I'm going to just go ahead and delete the zone. I want to show you FM8 really quick because the audio MIDI setup of that is just a little bit different and we might have to do something different for it. So, all right, I'm going to go into massive. I'm just going to close that, command Q to quit, and I'm going to open up FM8. All right, so we got here output device, and you can already see by this little interface here, it's a little bit different looking. So, looks like my audio driver stopped working. And um, that is a direct result of me closing Massive and then reloading something, and then it has to reallocate that aggregate device. I'm just going to switch it really quick. So I'm getting that to my reason aggregate device. Close this. Open up FN8. Sound card. I'm going to have it go out through the Soundflower 16 channel because I already have it routed. But usually if I'm using FM8, I would go into my Soundflower 2 channel and then change the settings within here. Command comma to open that. Check my channels. Be like, okay, I'm getting way too many signals right now. So I, yeah, have the input five and six. And then I go to my control panel. Just right here, show audio window. And I would say, all right, I don't want this guy anymore. I want this guy. And then I would just be good with that. So I'm going to open this guy back up. Just gonna load up my spider wop. And go ahead and start resampling. All right. And so <laughs> that didn't work. And let me show you why that didn't work. Okay, so in my audio MIDI settings, because the interface for FMA is a little bit different. I have to reallocate what is triggering FM8 specifically. So, since my axiom is USB in, I have to click that on. And so now we are seeing that it is triggering. And so now we are seeing right here that we were getting audio. <laughs> it looks like I'm messing up, but you know, really, I'm just showing you where I've messed up in the past and how to make a workaround. But that process really took me about maybe 30 minutes to an hour to really figure out. So I just want to show you where I've messed up. Yeah, okay. So start my sampling process, hit probably C1. This is really big bass. So I'll uh, let you hear it right after. So, going to edit sample, it already gives you the realignment with the start. I'm just going to highlight just a little bit of the beginning. And honestly, I didn't know how to make these fade-ins until I watched Steve Hightecker's video, and he highlighted it and clicked fade-in. I didn't know how to get this guy to un-gray out, because I was always like, wait, well, how do I do it? But I learned it watching tutorial. All right. So now I trigger directly from my Reason keyboard key. Now you can see why I'd want that sound specifically from FM8 into an NNXT sampler. If you guys want it, hit me up. I'll give you a bunch of samplers that I've already made. So, anyways, that's pretty much it for my tutorial. Um, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you're all good humans. All right. <laughs> Bye. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool. And until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. 
What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.